<laughs> Here we go. So yeah, this is Immersion, the Vega player from the Netherlands against FNEX K Brad. So he got the nice footy game going using the standing medium kick to poke at Kami. Okay. K Brad is in. So this is the problem for Immersion. Okay, good tech. Yep. Gets out of that situation. Kind of resets the situation a little bit. Oh, wow. Standing fierce. Nice. Good footsies from K Brad. Now he's got him in the corner. Oh, there it is. Try the crouch check, mm. except K Brad dropped the combo. Bad drop. Nice. Walks up to the throw. Can has got it back right to the wall now. Great throw range and a great Kara throw. Now Vega's gonna play this pretty lame right now. I'm thinking he doesn't have to take many risks. Oh, Ooh, that was too risky. Yeah. I do not like that. I do not like that play from Immersion at all. Yeah, he might have been trying to anti-air preemptively, but... The hardest part right now is K-Brad is not building any meter. Okay, he's got the meter now. Let's see. Okay. He's in. What mix-up does he have? He's just going to keep oh, him in the corner. Oh, okay. crouching jab. Good stuff. Straight to the throw. Oh, oh nice back Backdash all the cross-up. Yeah, except he's short mask and claw now. Yeah, you always have to be careful. Vega is... He's Rose and Chun-Li class when it comes to back dashes. Oh, yeah. So, farthest and very invincible and very fast. Got him again, but he, he wasn't expecting to cross up. Yep. So he came out with one, two, he started with low short instead of low jab, so he couldn't leak into low strong. Oh, and he, just and got he got thrown. the Azuna drop. So I think he was trying for the cross up on wake up. He whiffed the two crouch and medium kicks to yeah. try and get his timing, but it didn't turn out for him. K Brad should have used the standing fierce to stop that Azuna drop off the wall. Yep. Hits on both sides pretty, pretty well. Nice, there's that standing fierce I was yep. talking about. Really fast. Great anti-air hitbox as well. Oh, it's actually Sakura's got pretty much the same move. Makes her game in the corner really nice. Sorry, gets out to mid-screen Vega. Yeah, and the Immersion has to be careful because a whipped wall dive is easily ultraable by Kami yep. by a couple of dashes. If she knows you're going to run away, she'll just catch you with that ultra. Ooh, oh, wow. Good sweep. Risky slide. Got close enough for the Cosmic Heal to connect. See, K-Brad's got to make those EX dives count. Oh, Ooh, no. Got caught walking forward. That's such a great EX move because even if you gets blocked, you can just safely run away most of the yep. time. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, oh, good cross up. But he went for the throw instead of a combo. Yeah, I think he probably tried to back throw him back into the corner. So they good go dance version. around. Vega's got a big life lead except one solid combo. Oh, good mm -hmm. answer here. EX Scarlet Terror. Oh, good. Oh, okay, here we go with the low pressure. jab. And he stayed in front and then just got thrown himself, Cammy. Got to figure out a way in. Yep, smart block from Immersion. Knows that that's his main chance. And here we go. What does K-Brad have? Ooh, back to that shot of it. So K-Brad didn't get anything. Netherlands waving the flag. Netherlands obviously got extremely lucky in that situation. Yes, clearly. Clearly. clearly there was no skill involved clearly whatsoever. Very lucky there. So Immersion stays seated. Mike Ross is the next one up for Team USA 1 here. So... Oh. All right, here comes Mike Ross, fan favorite around the world from Street Fighter playing Standpoint. Yeah, he's made quite a name for himself. Yep. So I'm pretty sure getting your own name as a nickname is a good achievement. Mike, <laughs> Mike Ross, Ross. What's the achievement if you have a nickname but everyone refuses to call you by it? <laughs> you have a nickname? No, yeah, no one ever calls me Jay Chenzor. No, in fact, you know what? Everyone calls me either James Chen or J.C. Hensor these days. J.C. Hensor? Yeah. Uh, All right, that kind of makes sense, Mike I guess. Ross actually told me the first time he saw my nickname, that's what he thought I was, J.C. Hensor. Hmm. He told that story once, and it just spread, and now I'm J.C. Hensor to everybody. So, hmm. Actually, no, I do have a nickname now. Yep. I'm Gems Chen now. Gems Chen, all right. I am Gems Chen. That's what everybody likes calling me. Nice. Is that one of those stream monster ones, like Spooby? Yeah. Uh -huh. like Spooby, please. Stream Monsters have called me either Gems Chen or Salty Chen. Actually, I've been Salty Chen for years. Oh, yeah. Years and years and years. So. I think that's kind of the unofficial nickname of everyone in the fighting <laughs> game scene. If you play Marvel, your nickname oh, yeah. is Salty Blink. Yes, yep. exactly. So here we go. Mike Ross hitting down back. 
couple charge characters, so they both have really dominant pokes. Good foot speed from both of them. Now Mike has got the corner pressure. It's going to be hard for Vega to get out of this until he at least builds a bar for an EX wall dive. So he's got that now, except he's got to try and find the gap and not force it. Ooh, good good jumping fierce. immersion so far. Oh, EX headbutt does so much damage. Yeah. Especially to a character like Vega, who doesn't have much health in the first place. Great carrot throw. Could confirm with the low forward into the crouching strong. Did you see Mike Ross just stand right outside that low strong range? It's good distance. Oh! Ooh. Baited him into trying to counter poke the standing fierce. Yep. Responded with the EX headbutt. So Mike Ross likes to take lots of steps forward to get you thinking about the fact that when he walks forward, you're okay. But then yep. he'll walk forward into a headbutt all of a sudden out of nowhere. Yeah, he's only surprise. got a few frames to do the headbutt after he starts to walk forward, so. Yep. He's got him into the corner. Ooh. Ooh, jab, but he didn't have hands buffered into it. That could have been it for Mike Ross there. Ooh! Ooh! Walk forward into the low forward, confirmed from Vega. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of Vega players. They actually say that these days the Vega community are very much considering Vega a very strong character in this game. Oh, that low forward buff was huge for him. Like, it's faster by like one frame, right? Yep. That's all that mattered. Tells you how much a frame can make a huge difference. Yep. All right, here we go. Mike Ross is getting in there. Oh, Mike Ross shenanigans. Oh, got crossed up. Chasing him down. Okay, that's going to be it for this round. Yep. All right, Mike Ross looking really solid round two. But, you know, he got in once. Immersion kept him out the entire round last time. If he can just repeat that process, he's fine. And yep. he's got a lot of meter to burn. He's got to try and watch for that first jump in, I think, Mike. That's, yeah, that's how he's going to try and get in is the jump. Oh, he thought he was going for perhaps an Ochio throw or something. Oh, Ooh. nice counter. Ooh. Ooh. Got socked in the head. He got Ochio throw and he's in stun, stun. trouble. Okay, he's probably okay now. Okay, he's gotten out with that EX Scarlet Terror, but yeah, smart stuff for Mike just to wake up with that. And he punched it again. Yep. Second time he did that. Tried to catch him with that standing forward, did not succeed, and then just got counter EX headbutt. Mike Ross, this is, I mean, this is one of those things that top players do. They let the first round, even if they lose pretty badly, they just learn patterns and rhythms. Yep. And then use it against you really quickly. And it's a question I get a lot, actually, on like Ultra Chen TV. It's just like, if you're playing someone for the first time, how do you learn to read them? Yeah. And you know what? I wish I could answer that because I'm not very good at it myself, you know? Yep. Well, so I know Daigo says a lot of the time he just plays a lot so that he can kind of categorize players like he sees those common tendencies and then he can yeah. make a generalization about how you're likely to play and then he just has to make small adjustments after yes. that. So mm -hmm. these guys like Mike Ross who have a wealth of experience, all that kind of stuff, you probably take that same approach. Yep. And sometimes it really does just come down to being able to notice things a little bit more. If you're yep. really um, observant and attentive, you will pick up on certain patterns. In fact, I was actually talking to someone that I did play in the tournament today. I picked up on a pattern like almost immediately after round one. Yep. It was an eight-on player. He would do standing roundhouse, and if I ever blocked it, he would jaguar kick right away. Okay. Like automatically, so I uppercutted it, and I looked like I was like godlike reactions, yeah. you know? Everyone's like, oh my god! And it's yep. Nothing to do with reactions, you know? All right, so here we go. We got LLLMBR, Akuma. LLL, of course, standing for Lowland Lions. Yeah, I remember this guy having a good match against Tokido yesterday, I believe. Trying to get in the top 16. I think he came up just short. Okay, gets him with a dive kick. This man, Mike Ross, is having really good success with those EX headbutts right now. Mm. Oh, wow, and he got around the fireballs, too. Great read from Mike Ross knowing that L MBR was going to be a little scared after those hits. All right, so now he's in the vortex. EX headbutt's out. Oh. Auto-corrected EX headbutt. Oh, man, the guy's wearing the misery signals, too. That's pretty cool. It's actually a local Alberta band. Oh, nice. Yeah, you would Whoa. think that... um. After you crossed him up like that, he wouldn't be able to headbutt. But Mike Ross, one of the best at keeping that charge and getting that autocorrect going. Yep. Nice backdash, knew it wasn't going to crumple. 
Chasing him down. Ooh! Ooh gets Whip. counter poked with the Ow. Fire Fierce. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh. Mike Ross made short work at MBR there. Couldn't get anything started. The MBR just walks off, shakes his head. And Mike Ross kind of just looking to the side a little bit. Kind of with that look like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. It's all in a day's work. Yep. And you hear some of the audience out there kind of heckling as well. Yeah. So these guys, they have three uh, Lowland Lions on their team. Yep. It looks a bit, they all got the matching jerseys. Yep. Three members of Lowland Lions on that team. Those jerseys seem to be really popular with the European fighting game scene. Those oh, guys yeah, are always yeah, yeah. kitted out with, they look like soccer jerseys. Oh, yeah. Or absolutely. football it's, jerseys. It's really cool. Them. It's really cool. I mean, here we have just like the, the team t-shirts or the team hoodies, yeah. right? The AGE shirts or the, but the cool one is the broken tier because they don't have a jersey, but they wear their own shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh like, yeah. Yikes will show up with the you know, like the, the curly mustache yep. shirt. You know, Viscant shows up with the Phoenix Viscant shirt. That's cool. I like that. Oh, so this is that Fei Long you're talking about? Oh, okay. Momi, Momi. yes. So this is the player that Justin said he's the most worried about on this team. Oh, that's Filipino champ and Ricky who are heckling. Okay, now yeah. everything makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Say Canadians would do that. We're much too polite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it gets a Rekka. Tried to frame shot Mike Ross, except he didn't flinch. Oh, nice. Got in with those Rekkas. Ooh, good block for Mike there. Could have pressed the button there. Nice swing kick. It's very dangerous for Mike Ross because he can't throw out a lot of errant headbutts because the headbutts are very punishable by Rekkas. Yep. Ooh, goes trundling forward. Jab didn't connect with anything. Oh, oh nice, nice, nice confirm for Momi. Ooh, oh, he probably could have comboed off the trade there, I'm thinking. Decided to play it safe. Ross trying to find his way in. He knows he only has 20 seconds left. You see how much space he just covered by walking? As soon as he detected his opponent was scared to touch buttons, he just got in, and yeah. here he goes. He's gonna get the light bleed a little bit by this. Ooh. Oh, goes for a regular throw, really? And Mike Ross keeps going in. And now only seven seconds left. Oh, EX headbutt. Oh, two, yeah. one, yeah. ultra, yeah, smart stuff. And now we gotta watch this whole animation. <laughs> and Mike Ross takes it with a timer scam. Yep. Someone running up and giving, oh, Kongster going up and giving Momi some advice right away. Kongster, awesome Honda player in his own right, probably yep. telling him one of the things that makes Honda weak in this matchup. He's one of the only guys from uh, Team UK to make it out. Actually, I think he yep. is the only guy from Team UK to make it out. Yep, I asked him if there was anybody else who managed to make it out. He said, no, he's the only one. Um, Whatever advice he gave seems to be working. Oh, looks like that's a big jump in. Oh, and then the hands combo, and then he jumped out of the Ochio setup that time. Yep. Was suspecting it a little bit too much. A neutral jump, he could have won the round off that. Oh, nice punish against that stand roundhouse. I expect the chicken wing and Mike Ross to ultra the chicken wing. Yep. <laughs> I don't I know about that. Yeah, chicken I hope wing's I kind of an unnecessary risk yeah, right now, I think. I hope Momi is aware of that. Ooh. Should have landed with a flame kick. Ooh, yeah, okay, whiff punish on the Ochio instead. I don't think that's what Mike meant to do. He looked at his controller like, what the hell just happened? Yep. <laughs> Danced around. Both playing the mid-range game right now. Ooh, dash in. DPF EDC is his way out of the pressure, and then he baits the X headbutt. Mm. Honda still got one more. Yeah, unfortunately for Momi, he doesn't have any meter built up. Nice base. Nice. Oh, he got some corner pressure now. That's punishable. Good luck for Mike Ross, except the counter hit low strong links into the Rekkas. Oh, oh. and a neutral jump roundhouse. 
doing a ton of damage. Good stuff from Momi, taking it over Mike Ross. And it looks like they're gonna be sending up him one, two, three, four next. I just saw him get up, but he walked away. Where did I think he he's go? going to get his stick. Gotcha, gotcha. You see Momi sitting there by himself, Flash Metroid off to the side. Yep, here comes Kim, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna use Dictator. Dictator is a good choice because Dictator has excellent footsies. He can keep yep. up with the Fei Long footsies and yep. apply his own kind of pressure with the scissor kicks. All right, now the score is tied 2-2. Two, two. So it's a very crucial match here. Team US only has Justin Wong and Flash Metroid left. And I think Flash Metroid is not going to be using Gen. I heard Team USA said he has to play Zangief. He has to play Zangief. Mm -hmm. All right, they're that's not bad. They're making him play Zangief. I mean, Flash Metro got top eight at EVO one year using, using Zangief, Zangief so. so. It's not a bad pick, not bad at all. Kim just getting his button set up. Getting ready here, seeing how much work Bison can do in this international tournament this year. Because last year it was Shangoku Neurosis had a great showing. That's I think he right. actually OCV Team Canada. He's the guy who finally knocked us out. That's right, Shangoku Neurosis. Scariest Dictator, and it's really surprising to me that Dictator still hasn't yet won a major, that we've had Gen and Zangief win a major before M. Bison. I really want to see this character win a major one of these days, M. Bison. Yeah, so I think he's just really got to work to open people up. Like, he's a really solid character, but it's almost like he's missing that extra little something-something. Mm -hmm. But I saw Kim's got some really crazy setups, like ambiguous Psycho Punishers and stuff like that, so... Let's see what he can do here. Nice. All right. Wow, him taking to the air a lot suddenly stops. Oh, yep. Good Roundhouse combo. probably would have worked there. Woke up a little short, confirmed that his scissors kicks. And that's one of M. Bison's biggest powers that low short. That three frame low short is so good. I think he's trying to get in Momi's head right now, throwing out the taunt there. I don't think Momi took the bait though, he's still playing it cool. If anything was to get in his head right now, it'd be F Champ's annoying voice. <laughs> oh, just a little bit too far away for the Rekka. Let's get one, two, three, four. It's looking really solid right now. Oh, wow. You know Headstomp whiffed, when, I think. You know how sometimes when it's rain and you hear like that dripping noise outside and after a while it tunes out? Yeah. I think that's how I've gotten with Filipino Champ these yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> Now Kim has a sizable life lead. Oh, here Ooh, we go. Got the start of scissors. Try to get out of there and using the EX cycle get out. Oh, nice. Yeah, and a great an punish. Yeah. Another time. This guy's really feeling himself right now. I, I don't know if Justin just told him to stop doing that or something. It looked kind of like that. <laughs> but Kim, one, two, three, four. Definitely having a little fun at Momi's expense. a little bit too late to get the neutral jump punish on the Rekka. I guess yeah. Bison's jump is probably too tall and floaty for him to consistently be able to use that as an option. Nice chase down with the Rekkas. Yep, it wasn't a reversal actually, so he timed it just long enough to get the grounded punish. Yeah, you always have to be careful with taunts because I've almost always seen players who taunt end up losing fights. Yeah, Marn I think is famous for that. <laughs> I was just about to say, <laughs> you could ask Marn. <laughs> Still though. Doing pretty good. He's got the life disadvantage this time, but it's still at the point in the match where I think Momi would want to go in. Yeah, I really do like Kim's patient play. Oh, God, got him with the slide. Great block on that cross up. Oh, Ooh. the tricks. Oh, and then he got baited. Nice focus to get out of that pressure situation. Got all of his white life back. Ooh, nice spacing on that scissor kick. And the not hardest thing right now for Momi is that him does have three meters built up. So he's got three EX Psycho escapes. Oh, never mind. He just used two of them. Oh, then he used on the EX. Ooh, not quite a crumple. Okay, there he goes. Shouldn't have teleported. Got him. Nice. See, Good stuff for Momi. That was a really nice little sequence. He started in the corner there. He tried to bait the Psycho Crusher right when you pointed out how much meter Kim had. 
didn't fall for it. Kim had to spend two bars in an FADC instead. So now it's actually Momi. has got the life for a meter advantage going into this last one. Predict a focus attack. No, nobody's showing focus just yet. Oh, Shikaman came up short. Oh, and then DP on wake up from that far away. No. I'm not sure that I agree with that. Yeah. That's a, that's 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 a sign of nervousness. Yep. He's got no reason to be nervous. He's the one he won the last round. He has the momentum, but him still working on a perfect, and it's 57 seconds left in the round. We're gonna need some guile theme for Momi to make a comeback here. Yep. Oh, it got a counter hit right when Bison landed from the jump. And his record got punished, and Kim does the whole combo so he can get a hard knockdown into the or sorry soft knockdown. But it kind of gets him crushing. out of that corner situation. I would have liked to have him do a scissor kick instead. Because Psycho kind of put himself back into the same position. And here we go. Option select. Oh, yeah, way too far. So, yeah, I was probably hoping that Bison would do uh, the kick teleport, I think, is the short teleport. And Momi with a reluctant handshake. Not very happy at all. Yep. And up comes next is uh, Doom Domain. We saw him play a bunch of Marvel. He was actually pretty good at Marvel. Yeah, but nice he, Spencer team. He has a strong uh, Ryu. Yeah, actually, I think the only match I saw him play Street Fighter yesterday was against uh, Human Bomb, and he lost that one. Kim, one, two, three, four. Of course, like I said, from Southern California, was a huge CBS2 player. Had worked super hard, finally won an Evo West oh, in really? CBS2. Yeah, he was so happy about that, I remember. Wow, I didn't know that. Because I, I, I was actually filming all the matches in a camcorder. Oh, after, really? Yeah, and after the weekend was done, he was just like, can I get footage? Can I get the footage? Can I get the footage? <laughs> he literally came to my house, grabbed my tape so he could capture them for me. So nice. he could have it on record of him winning the Evo West. Wicked. All right, let's see what Doom Domain can do. Again, part of the Lowlands Li Lowland Lions team. It's not sure who would have the edge in this one. You know, I've seen this fight so often between Andy OCR and Bai, or Big the Slick and Bai. It's so hard to call this match. I yep. think this match is straight up 5-5. Five five. Okay. Oh, nice. But of course, Kim1234 is playing in Japan, so that means he has a lot of experience against some of the best Ryu players in the whole world. For sure. But you never know, maybe Doom Domain is one of them. It's always hard because Ryu is one of those characters that, you know, they're really good Ryus are very hard to come by. Yep. Like the expert Ryus are really hard. I mean, the only expert Ryus out there are players like John Choi and Daigo and Alex Vai. And I mean, yeah. that, that list of names is like, Amazing, 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 right? Yeah. So it's so hard to find amazing Ryu players. Yeah, he's really popular at kind of the entry level, but to be successful with the Shoto type character like him, you have to be able to use all your character's tools mm -hmm. very well. And there's so much mind. He's the character that needs the most Yomi, you know what yep. I mean? Because he has every tool that you possibly need. Oops. He has every tool that you possibly need to win. Yep. And you just have to use him correctly. He has a great sweep, he has an uppercut, he has a projectile, he has a hurricane. One of the best low forwards in the game. Standard low strong, standard low fierce, yep. standard jump ra jump attacks, you know. But yeah, you have to be able to use all of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, try to get an auto. Man, he's really forcing the uppercuts here. In Doom Domain, you could sense some frustration because when he whipped that uppercut in the last round that Kim didn't kill him on, he looked really frustrated and really annoyed. And yep. then he just threw out another uppercut in frustration after that. Yep. Oh, oh. nice. Oh, oh wow. Again. Tried to get psychic with that one, I think. Yeah, he's he's going to uppercut crazy. Far too uppercut crazy. <laughs> nice dodging of the fireball there. Yeah. That's the other thing, he's got a really good focus attack. Mm-hmm. An average four dash, just back dash is kind of bad. Oh, nice. there he goes. Little forward fireball. 
think at that distance, Kim could have gotten through that, but I don't think he was charged yet. Oh, oh. man. Really nice use of the sweep by Kim1234. Yeah, he's gotten in there a couple of very smart times. And oh, Kim, last time he pressed the button against that, and that time he said, you know what, I know you're going to try to frame trap me. You see him just sit there and block that uppercut? Yep. Really smart stuff from Kim1234. So now it's up to Team Netherlands anchor. Kind of an unknown quantity at this part. I'm not even. Filipino champ leaning right on the edge of the stage there. Heckling Team Netherlands. This guy's name is Chaos Theory. <laughs> oh, my, my bad. Apparently, Filipino champ is heckling Mike Ross. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Making fun of Mike Ross for having lost, uh, you know, in this match. Not sure. Oh, right Phil on. Filipino champ loves Mike Ross. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's too funny. Come on, Filipino champ. You're supposed to be rooting for the other U.S. team. Where's the solidarity, man? He's feeling overconfident right now. All right, here we go. So we got a bison mirror to finish things off. Nice. So actually, did we see this match yesterday? Between these two? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, bison mirror? I think we did, yeah. Hmm. I can't remember who won that one in any case. Here we go, using that great bison ult. Really like the Robo Bison. Oh, <laughs> really? That always makes me think it looks like something from Tron or something. Like oh, yeah. That, you know? Like something oh. from a cheesy, like, 80s, like, sci fi flick or something like that, you know? Yeah. I think it's the shoulder pads that do it. <laughs> nice Ooh. stuff. Kim getting in there, staying in there. Oh, traded. That's great for Kim. Kept him in the corner, but then somehow he ended up cornering himself. A nice oh, throw. Man. And all of a sudden, we see a completely different Kim. If you remember the last match, Kim was super defensive, yep. very slow pace, and now all of a sudden, Kim is just going crazy. Look at him, just throwing those standing roundhouses, disrespecting with the EX scissor kick, doesn't care. And now he's gonna get thrown. Kim is gonna get blown up for this. Ooh. Nice, smart stuff from Chaos Theory, recognizing that. Oh, wow. That's gonna be punished, yep. That's gonna be punished. Scissors in the neutral. This time, Chaos Theory gets the first hit. Except Kim gets the momentum back by landing EX Cycle Crusher. Now it's a throw. Same side with the cross up. Ooh, links to the stand roundhouse. Ooh, oh, ooh, and a and dizzy. Stun combo. It's only two hits. This is still gonna hurt. Throws in the taunt, goes for a reset. <laughs> Kim, Kim, Kim. Oh, don't punish. Oh, what? Wow. That nice was awesome. Here. Oh, oh, no, you can't focus the EX yeah. follow-up. And, and now that's you're going to get chipped it. out, yeah. So Team Netherlands is joining Team Canada 1 in the loser's bracket. And uh, Team USA moving on. They will be facing off against Team Japan. That Ooh. is going to be a killer matchup yeah. right there. And... Uh, So now we got Team USA 2 and Team Korea Wow! next up. See how that goes. All right. Well, I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab a drink. Ha, ha, ha. 